This is the version of the DFG film Unbiased Review, with a spoken audio description of the visual content. Professor Alexandra Maria Klein, Professor of Nature Conservation and Landscape Ecology at the University of Freiburg, is walking down a street. Cut to Professor Marilyn Martina Addo. She is Professor of Infectious Diseases, Institute Director and Head of the Division of Infectious Diseases at the University Medical Center Hamburg-Eppendorf. Here she is walking down a corridor at the Bernhard Nocht Institute for Tropical Medicine in Hamburg. The building looks modern. The hallway is glazed on both sides. She is on her way to her office. Cut to Professor Gerion Rudolf Fink. He is Professor of Neurology at the Medical Faculty of the University of Cologne and is walking down a white, sober corridor at University Hospital Cologne. He is on his way to a colleague. Professor Fink is sitting with a doctor at two screens in a scientific office. They are looking at MRI images of a brain and discussing them. Cut to a university greenhouse. There are numerous flowering exotic plants to be seen. Professor Alexandra Maria Klein is wearing special magnifying glasses that allow her to examine the plants more closely. Cut to the office of Professor Gerion Fink. He is sitting at his desk. In the background, MRI images of a brain can be seen on a screen. In front of Professor Fink is an open laptop. Next to it are several bound proposals that he's reviewing. Key passages have been marked using colored pieces of paper. Professor Fink says, As, As reviewers, we have a lot of responsibility. We decide whether a research project can go ahead or not. This affects people's careers too. That's why it's so important to keep going back to the issue of prejudice or simple critically reassess our own attitudes. Cut back to Professor Klein. She is walking through the greenhouse with exotic plants. Professor Alexandra Maria Klein is talking to Professor Gerion Fink. Both nod as they speak. They appear to be agreeing with each other. Professor Alexandra Maria Klein speaks into the camera. Being biased against a certain stereotype, a person's gender or their background, that's something we simply can't allow under any circumstances because it leads to injustice. Cut to the bright office of Professor Addo at the University Medical Center, Hamburg-Eppendorf. She is sitting at her desk in front of a computer. She makes notes on a piece of paper. The scene ends with Professor Addo sitting at her desk, looking at her computer. Professor Addo says, And that's quite a challenge. It's sometimes uncomfortable too. It calls on us to rethink our attitudes. It probably also requires a change of culture, and that's always a challenging process. A painted portrait of a young white woman wearing a blue turban and colorful clothes appears. It is overpainted by two other portraits standing side by side. The one on the left shows a man with facial features that can be interpreted as being Asian. He's wearing a shirt and glasses. His black hair and short beard contain gray streaks. The portrait on the right shows a black woman with a flower-patterned blouse, beige Peter Pan collar and glasses. Her black hair is combed back and pinned up. Both portraits seem very lifelike, but they are obviously not photographs. The two pictures are overpainted shortly afterwards with other portraits. These are then also overpainted, and so the series continues. All other portraits show people with differences in terms of gender, age, skin color, facial shape, and body shape, in some cases with visible disabilities. The clothing differs considerably in each case, and can also be interpreted as belonging to different cultures or even religions. The speaker says, These portrait images were created using artificial intelligence. None of the pictures shows a real person. And yet they appear to us to be likable or competent in different ways. The series of images pauses at one image, that of a man. The right half of his face is replaced by a woman's face. More images appear that have been generated using artificial intelligence. More and more portraits appear. They become smaller and are cut through diagonally. The result is a whole kaleidoscope of portraits, in which the focus on individual portraits is lost at some point, as they become very small and the number of portraits increases. In the end, there is only a colorful overall picture of lots of different people as a screen-filling image. Our thinking is based on automated judgment processes, 
and can potentially be shaped by prejudice, enabling us to make decisions very swiftly in our day-to-day -day lives. The kaleidoscope-like images are distorted and overpainted in dark green-grey. The word bias appears in a white circle. The circle around bias becomes a magnifying glass. Two stylized documents appear that say achievements and projects. The magnifying glass passes over these documents. Through the magnifying glass, they seem distorted. This can result in bias, something that can also find its way into the assessment of research projects and achievements. The distortions subside, the documents disappear. In order to make decisions that ensure equal opportunities, and are based on scientific criteria, such bias must be avoided as far as possible. A text appears. No person is to be prevented or excluded from pursuing an academic career because of non-scientific factors. The words non-scientific factors and pursuing an academic career are underlined. The text disappears. A drawing of five stylized persons appears. Above each head there is a stylized eye. The figures are marked and patterned differently in white and grey. They represent the diversity of human beings, while the stylized eyes placed over each figure represent the diversity of their points of view, perspectives and experiences. The DFG takes the position that a diversity of perspectives and experiences can significantly enhance the quality of research. The figures burst open one by one and a star appears with the pattern or colouring of the relevant figure in each case. The stars rotate around each other and become swirling dots that form the DFG Equity and Diversity logo. The logo consists of several dots that radiate outwards from a centre. Next to this are the words DFG Equity and Diversity. There are numerous studies on the effects of prejudice in front of a yellow-red background, numerous stylized documents appear in rows with suggested tables, charts and texts intended to represent numerous studies. Magnifying glasses move over these documents, but the documents do not appear distorted through them. Taking the example of a behavioral economics journal, Huber et al. showed that the prominence of an author can influence how they are assessed in peer review. Reviewers assessed identical manuscripts differently depending on who the stated author was. A graphic appears with the heading Author Prominence in Peer Review. Below, a bar chart shows that in a peer review process, identical manuscripts with differing information about the authors, all male, were assessed differently depending on who the stated author was and accordingly recommended with 77% approval each in the case of a prominent author, 52% approval in the case of anonymized authors, and 35% approval in the case of an unknown named author. A footnote in this and the following three graphs refers to the source of the respective study. Murray et al. were able to show for the call for full submissions of articles in a life science journal that acceptance rates were higher the greater the degree of homogeneity between submitters and reviewers. A second graphic appears with the heading Homogeneity as an advantage in peer review. The chart shows a US, German and Chinese flag, each representing the country of origin of the authors of scientific articles. Percentages and the corresponding bars show that the more homogeneity there was between the corresponding authors and the reviewers, for example, with regard to gender and demographic characteristics, the higher the acceptance rates were. For American researchers, it is 39.2%. For German researchers, 29.3%. And for Chinese researchers, only 12.6%. Tarantine et al. found for US letters of recommendation in the field of surgery that adjectives used to describe applicants reflected gender stereotypes. A third graph appears with the heading Stereotypes in Letters of Recommendation. The graphic shows gender-specific terms used on the differently gendered sides of a stylized figure. The word exceptional appears on the male applicant side, along with the symbol of a star, while the words hardworking and delightful appear on the female applicant side, both with a handshake symbol. In their analysis of English language studies, Lippens et al. found that people with disabilities, elderly individuals and those with recognisable ethnic characteristics were significantly less likely to receive a positive response to their applications. A fourth graphic appears with the heading Disadvantages in Applications. 
The diagram symbolically shows a person in a wheelchair, two elderly people and people with different skin colours. Percentages indicate that candidates with disabilities received 41% less positive feedback on their applications, elderly candidates received 31% less and candidates with recognisable ethnic characteristics received 37% less. Switch from the abstract presentation of study results to a real scene. Professor Addo is sitting at her desk and looking at the previously mentioned studies and graphs on the screen of her computer. On a second screen, the DFG's website on equity and diversity is open. She marks passages of text with a red pen in a document lying on the desk in front of her. Looking at all these studies, it is shocking to see how bias is such a big factor in the peer review process, and with a measurable impact too. Cut to Professor Klein, sitting at a table in front of a blue wall with framed photos. She opens her laptop. She types her scientific review into the input field of the DFG's electronic proposal processing portal on her laptop and makes handwritten notes in a notebook. So I have to be objective in the review, and that's by no means easy, even if I block out the names or perhaps not even look at them at all. If I am familiar with my subject area, I often tend to read between the lines. Who is this? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is she from Germany? Is she from somewhere else? We have to focus on these things all the time. Professor Klein is walking down a flight of stairs at the Institute. Now she's in a laboratory, looking through a microscope, dressed in a lab coat. Cut to Professor Gerion Rudolf Fink, as he's seen from behind, walking through a corridor at the University Hospital Cologne. He is on his way to a group review situation. In a room with high, well-stocked bookshelves, there are several panels with scientific posters, arranged in a semicircle. By the posters, there is a group of researchers at different career stages, who are discussing the scientific projects presented on the posters with Professor Fink. So I think it's really vital for reviewers to take time and really think carefully. I believe it's crucial to train people and create an awareness that reviewers need to be self-critical. People also have to be aware of the fact that in the review situation with others, it is research itself that is being assessed. Detailed view of a brief scene from the review process. A hand points to one of the scientific posters with diagrams, pictures of an experimental setup and technical terms in English. Cut to Professor Alexandra Maria Klein. She says into the camera. So, first of all, we need very, very clear guidelines. We have these available to us, so we have to question ourselves. Am I doing this right? Am I sticking to the guidelines? Or am I deviating from them? She scrolls through the DFG website on equity and diversity on her laptop. At the same time, she leaves through a proposal that she's reviewing. She makes handwritten notes in English in her notebook. Cut to Professor Marilyn Martina Addo. She says into the camera. Another thing that's very important here is to really focus on what is in the proposal documents. The review and evaluation should be carried out exclusively based on the proposal documents. Professor Addo is walking outside, wearing warm street clothes with a thick jacket and scarf, towards the main entrance of the Bernhard Nocht Institute for Tropical Medicine in Hamburg. She climbs a flight of stairs and enters the brick building through a glass door. She is holding a red booklet in her hand. She is on her way to talk to colleagues. Professor Addo is sitting at a desk in her office with two colleagues. They are discussing and taking notes. So excellent in Diversity and equity are part and parcel of excellent research. Becoming aware of the issue of bias is also a step towards achieving this goal. Professor Marilyn Martina Addo is once again shown frontally indoors. Then she is walking down a street again in a thick jacket. Hamburg's Elbphilharmonie Concert Hall can be seen in the background. The picture is overpainted in dark green. The following words appear. More on that www dfg.de slash bias slash en with the DFG logo below. The film ends with another DFG logo. The URL www.dfg.de and the DFG social media channels Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Mastodon.